Hi, I'm Cassie and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making Japan's 7-Eleven strawberry sandwich. This is one of the most popular things for tourists in Japan's 7-Eleven. I think the top three that I've noticed seem to be the egg sandwich, the fried chicken and the strawberry sandwich. So today we're going to be looking at how to make this at home. And it's a fairly simple recipe of bread, strawberries, cream and custard. Because it's so simple, today we'll be making everything from scratch except for the bread. So one of the things I noticed is that in the whipped cream there's actually some mascarpone. So we've put that in there. And also with the custard, it's a little bit different to British custard in that Japanese custard seems to use flour instead of cornstarch and sometimes they put butter in at the end. This made my custard a lot more smooth and obviously gave it that very signature buttery flavour as well. So let's take a look at how to make Japan's 7-Eleven strawberry sandwich at home. Okay, so before we get started, let's just have a quick look at what's inside this Japanese fruit sandwich. What I'm most interested in is the mascarpone, so let's make sure to add this to our whipped cream. So first for our custard, we'll need some white flour, some milk, some butter or margarine, some vanilla, an egg yolk, and some sugar. Then we'll need some Japanese fluffy shokupan, or white and fluffy bread. This one is hotel bread and it's nice and squishy. Then for our cream, we'll need some heavy whipping cream, some mascarpone, and last but definitely not least, this is the most important ingredient, strawberries. Now go ahead and measure 25 grams of white caster sugar or granulated sugar, and this is going to go straight into our egg yolk. So now grab a bowl and some kind of container because we're going to be putting the egg whites into the container and the egg yolk into the bowl. So today we're not actually going to be using the egg whites, we're just going to be using the egg yolk for the custard. But I don't like waste so I'm going to be putting the egg whites into this container and putting them in the fridge. What I'll actually be using the egg whites for is a really simple chocolate mousse where you just whisk up the egg whites with some sugar and pour in some melted dark chocolate and then set it in the fridge. And it's a really simple way to use up these leftover egg whites. As you can see, I kind of failed at cracking the egg, but I'm just transferring the yolk between the two shells to separate the egg. What you don't want to do here is crack the yolk and get it into the whites because then you can't whisk them the same. So I'm just going to pop that in the fridge for later. So as you can see, the egg yolk actually cracked as I put it into the bowl, but that's okay. Now we're just going to whisk it up with that 25 grams of sugar. And something that I noticed about this Japanese custard is that it's quite a lot sweeter than the British custard that I'm used to, but that's okay because it's adding a bit of sweetness to our Japanese fruit sandwich. So now we're going to measure 10 grams of our white flour. This is going to thicken up our custard. And normally in the UK I would use cornstarch, but that's not actually very readily available in normal Japanese supermarkets, so I guess that's why they tend to use flour. And then we're going to sieve this into our egg mixture. We want to avoid lumps as much as possible, so that's why we're sieving it in. We don't want to just dump it all straight in because that will make for a lumpy custard, which is not nice to spread on a sandwich. So the amount of custard that we're making here is actually very small. I wanted to make the minimum amount of custard possible because we're literally just using it in place of butter on our bread. So even with this minimum amount, it's still going to be way more than you need for a single fruit sandwich. But that's okay, in Japan sometimes they eat it just as a pudding on its own. You can just set it in a cup or something like that. But what I ended up doing was just having the whipped cream, the custard and the strawberries all together by themselves as a dessert. And this is what it should look like when you're done. So then pour 100 milliliters of milk into a pot and get about half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. If you have real vanilla, then that's obviously much better, but sadly, this was all that was available to me at the time. 
Then put it on a medium heat. And because we have such a small amount of milk, then it won't take very long for it to get bubbly. So when it's just boiled, then take it off the heat and start pouring it into our egg mixture. Make sure that your bowl is heat proof. And we're just gonna add a small bit at the start so that it's easy to mix. But then after that, you can pretty much just pour the whole lot in. Then grab your rubber spatula and we're going to... Oh, it smells nice. Oh, thank you. I didn't even tell him to say that. <laughs> then grab your rubber spatula and we're going to try and get as much as we can out of that bowl back into the pot. And at this point, then a lot of Japanese recipes will put it through a sieve or strainer, but I didn't find that that made too much difference. So I'm just putting it straight in. Then we're going to put that on a low heat and just keep stirring it until it becomes a nice thick custardy consistency. This can take a little while on a low heat but it will give you a nice even thickness. You can ramp up the heat a little bit, it will go a lot quicker but there is a risk of it being lumpy. Then when it's pretty much done we're going to take about 5 to 10 grams of butter and put that in and just mix it about. Switch off the heat and give it a stir and you should have this nice, gloopy, smooth custard. Set that aside and let it cool for a few hours or overnight before spreading it on your sandwich. Now it's time to make our cream. As I pointed out, there seems to be some mascarpone in the cream. So we're going to start with one tablespoon of mascarpone and try and shake that off your spoon. Maybe use a spatula to help out. Then get three tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. I've also added just a few drops of vanilla essence. Then I'm just going to hand whisk this until stiff peaks form. If you're doing this by hand, it will take about three minutes. We want it to be fairly thick and spreadable, so whisk that until stiff peaks are forming. Like this. So now I'm going to grab my so-called hotel bread. This seems to be a fluffy and buttery bread that was available at my local supermarket and I'm going to cut this into a few slices. Today I'm just going to be making one sandwich, so that's just two slices here. Then I'm just going to cut the crusts off in the typical kombini sandwich style. If you're not in Japan, then I would recommend just getting any kind of pre-sliced white bread. Basically, the softer the better and the sweeter the better. And now I've got my perfect square sandwich slice. Don't just throw those crusts away. You can use them to make panko breadcrumbs or you can use them to make croutons. So now that everything's ready, let's see how exactly 7-Eleven puts together their strawberry sandwiches. If you're a die-hard strawberry sandwich fan, then avert your eyes now because I'm about to commit strawberry sandwich massacre. I'm peeling this apart so that we can see exactly how they've laid everything out. And let me just pull that closer to you guys. <laughs> From an initial look, it seems that the custard is spread on one side of the sandwich and the cream is spread on the other. And the strawberries are lined right down the middle so that we get that distinctive strawberry sandwich appearance. Then there's also a token strawberry on the outside so that you don't get a sad bite at the end with no strawberry. So I'm just going to cut the heads off my strawberries and here I used a sort of medium sized strawberry but if you want to get it as close as possible to the 7-Eleven strawberry sandwich then I would recommend fairly small strawberries because this one makes the sandwich a lot thicker. Then I'm grabbing my refrigerated custard and I don't think we need this giant knife anymore so let's use this butter knife. Then let's get placing. As you can see, the custard is thick and gloopy from being in the fridge. And it's pretty easy to spread. It's pretty much like a weird thick butter. So 
So as we saw in the dissected fruit sandwich, then we just had custard on one side. So I'll be putting custard on this side and whipped cream on the other. Here I've layered the custard pretty thinly, but I would actually recommend a thicker layer so that you can really taste the butter and vanilla flavors. Then get your whipped cream and we're just going to spread that out from the middle. Look at all that creamy goodness. Doesn't that just make your mouth water? Then we're going to line up our strawberries diagonally across the middle and put our two little strawberry halves on either side. Then it's time to smush our strawberries down with our whipped cream side. Doesn't look like much right now, but let's get out our bread knife. Usually I wouldn't want to use a bread knife on a completed sandwich, but I did try using a normal knife here and it did not work. So I recommend a knife with a serrated edge. Careful of your fingers. And now for the moment of truth. Woo, looks pretty good to me. Time to plate it up and compare it to the original 7-Eleven strawberry sandwich. Okay, so the 7-Eleven one is a bit skinnier and a lot more compact, but how do they taste? Here's the 7-Eleven versus my own. Let's first try the 7-Eleven one to remind me of the flavors. Okay, so it's pretty sweet, but the main flavor that hits me first is the slightly sour strawberry itself, followed by the sweet cream and custard. So what about my version? Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I really like my version, but it does taste a little bit different, mainly because the bread itself is a lot thicker. So what I'm, what I'm tasting the most is the strawberries and then the buttery flavors of the bread. This could be pretty easily rectified by having thinner slices of bread. I also think I wasn't generous enough with the custard because the custard is the sweetest part of this. Okay, but this does actually taste really good, so I'm just gonna have another bite. And I'm really loving the flavors of that fresh bread. But, who, who's that? Who are you coming? Tomo, what are you doing here? I'm doing a, hey, you can't just take my, what? Hey, you can't, that's my, oh. So in the end, they turned out a little bit different, but the main differences were that my bread was too thick and I used two big strawberries. And basically the taste is pretty similar. Um, the only thing that my boyfriend said after stealing all of my sandwiches was that the cream in the 7-Eleven version was a bit sweeter. And that would be because we didn't add any sugar into our version. So my advice to make it taste as close to the 7-Eleven version as possible is either to put some sugar into the whipped cream itself or to just use a bit more of the custard and put it on both sides because the custard is very sweet so it will just bring out that sweetness. I would also say that you could just use pre-sliced, pre-packaged bread to get the same kind of thickness but to be honest um, I think that they both taste great and I don't think that it tastes much different it's more it's the fact that you can taste the bread a bit more in this one. So there you have it my Japan 7-Eleven strawberry sandwich recipe. Looking at these is making me really hungry, so I'm gonna go and eat these off camera now. But if you liked what you saw, then click the like button or subscribe to find out more Japanese recipes. I'm gonna go now.